Hello, in this video we derive the maximum likelihood estimators for the parameters of a beta distribution. <laughs> I'm calling this part one because we're going to develop a part two where we take these equations and we copy them into R and we solve them using Gauss Raps or the Newton Raphson method in R. Um, we also combine the method of moments estimators in that same video, but that'll be part two. <coughs> So here we have a beta distribution, of course x is between 0 and 1, the alpha and beta are uh, greater than 0. A sample, so the joint density is this, so this is x, this is a vector, and since each observation is independent, it's the product, <clears throat> and then we, when we multiply this by itself n times, this constant gets raised to the nth power. These, the product of x1, 2, 3, all have the same exponent, so they're raised to that power, in the same way for this uh, third term. Now the log likelihood, we take the log of this, and so this n comes out front of the log, and then since it's divided by, it's minus, minus. This piece comes out front, log of a product is the sum of the logs, so that's where that sum comes in. And here comes out front, and then it's the log of this product, which is the sum of that log. <laughs> now, we take partial derivatives of this log likelihood with respect to alpha first. So here we get n, and then this is 1 over gamma alpha plus beta times the derivative. And here is n, 1 over gamma of alpha times the derivative of gamma of alpha. Um, when we multiply this by alpha, we get it back. We set it to zero, and we solve for alpha. Well, this is a pretty tough equation to solve for alpha, but we can simplify it a little bit. If we divide everything by n, and then that's where this comes from, and those go away. But this ratio is what's called a digamma function, and so we're left with this. And we're going to use and R has a built-in digamma and trigammas, which we'll use in a second, <coughs> to solve for alpha. Now, if we take the partial derivative of L with respect to beta, we get the same thing. So it's N times 1 over this times the derivative. N times 1 over gamma times the derivative of gamma. Then we take this times beta, and we get that sum. Again, we divide by n everywhere, and that's what this is. And then this ratio is called a digamma function, so we get this. Now, to solve these nonlinear equations, we're going to use the newton raphson method. I have a video that tries to give an intuitive explanation of each of these methods, and then provides the equations. And so we're going to make use of that. And when you watch this video, this will be f1, or this one, the first function, and this will be f2. So now when we take the Jacobian of this transformation, so this is f1, with the partial of f1 with respect to alpha. So here we just get the derivative of this digamma, which is called a trigamma. Here we get a trigamma of alpha. This is constant, so it goes away. So this is a partial of f1 with respect to beta. Constant, constant, so we get this. So it's a trigamma of alpha plus beta. Here, f2, the f partial of f2 with respect to alpha is just a trigamma of alpha plus beta because those are constant. Now, this is, this is the partial of f2 with respect to beta. So we get the trigamma of alpha plus beta, trigamma of beta, that's constant, goes away. So this is the Jacobian of the transformation. And then in the video, we derive this equation here. So this is the iterative method. So th this is the, you know, we have to have an initial guess for alpha and beta. And then it's minus the inverse of this Jacobian evaluated at alpha at that same estimate, so we plug them in here, and then it's f of, you know, evaluated at our estimate for beta, but f is each component, so this is f1 
which is this piece here, evaluated at our estimates for beta, alpha, and beta. And F2 was this, evaluated at our, our initial guess for alpha and beta. <coughs> and then this is the updated alpha and beta. And then you replug them in and get a new one, replug them in, get a new one, until it converges. Now, one approach is how do we find our initial guess for alpha and beta? Well, one approach is to use the method of moments. And I have a video called Method of Moments Estimation for Beta Distribution. And there, we're going to use that method to come up with the initial guess for alpha and beta. And then you start this iterative process. Well, we're going to take these equations and copy them into R and run it and see what happens and if it converges. And, of course, to no surprise, it does. And when the larger and larger sample size you use, the closer and closer those maximum likelihood estimates are to the original or true parameters when we conduct our simulation. So, well, anyway, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.